that our century is one of the most quiet century with respect to volcanism. I want to talk real quick about this mystery of the year 536 AD. It's quite interesting because whether or not you believe the exact time timeline or years, there's an undis well, an indisputable piece of evidence out there which covers as I understand it or as I've heard it, uh, the entire earth. And that is going back, if you count back, if you assume that this is the correct year and you count back by using a, a, an amalgamation of all the different tree rings, of all the trees, the few actually, <laughs> out there that were uh, around and can be traced back at least from some known point in history, Sometimes they use wood from a building that they know the year it was built, but it, things start to match up, and you find something. When you go back through the tree rings, and you go back however many years it is from this year to get to 536 A.D., then you find that there is a period of sometimes one, sometimes four. Usually it's about four years where there's Hardly any normal growth. In fact, it seems like the seasons didn't really even happen. And this goes for quite a few different places all over the Earth. Now, when we're talking about the latitudes, I don't know the bounds of the latitudes, but it's found in Ireland. It's found pretty far north. I assume it's found in southern latitudes. I don't know that yet but all the way down to Israel and other places near the, nearer to the equator. So it seemed to have covered most of the earth. When you talk about longitudes, that is immaterial. The longitudinal coordinates of the trees that exhibit this, in fact, almost all the trees, if they do go back that far, they exhibit this anomaly you'll find that the years match up. And as much as there is some error in the years, plus or minus, with counting the rings and how you can have double growth years or some oddities of nutrition or locally something going on that would throw it off a few years, maybe as many as even a dozen years. Alpine rings from the Sierra Nevada mountains in California show that 535, 536, and 541 were three of the four worst years in the past two millennia. In Chile, Fitzroya trees record the greatest summer growth drop of the past 1,600 years. In Siberia, a 20-year decline in tree growth in the 530s and 540s was the most serious in the past 1,900 years. So why were the trees not growing? Was it dark, cold, natural pollution, or drought? For Mike Bailey... I don't know if it's much more than that. You can match them up pretty well. Then you go back to the dates of certain buildings where they say when they cut, like, for example, Notre Dame, they know when they, when they uh, timber the wood for the church and the year that they cut all those huge trees down to build the church you know and all that wood's burned now but in that you would find this anomaly and it would be as many rings back as it was from the date when that church was built if indeed it was correctly reported and apparently many times they were correctly reported as to the year that they were built at least in terms of years ago and so we're looking at somewhere around 1,500 years ago. And, uh, well, I just used a calculator, and it's about exactly 1,486 years ago. And it lasted up to four, maybe five years, but really four years in most cases. And there are some videos that show there was a researcher who found a lot of this, and I think his research is very good. And it took a better part of a decade even to just 
log the information on one species of tree, a long-lived tree, I think it was an ash, that chronicles this event in the actual historical record of the tree rings. So it makes me wonder, if there were a thousand years added, that would have made it 484 BC. And I went and I looked in the timelines to see if it was exactly a thousand years to see if there were any anomalous things happening. And that's around the time, I think it was just after, or just, just before, after Ezekiel in the biblical record and some other things. But it, it didn't really show what I was expecting. There were some worldwide disastrous events, some regime changes and things chronicled then, but nothing really jumped out at me matching up. And so I need to take another look at that because it being exactly a thousand years, probably not. I think what I'm looking for is something like possibly the date of the crucifixion, or it could be a major judgment from the Old Testament, or just anything from literature, from ancient records, given maybe a thousand years difference, and, and something close to exactly a thousand years would make sense to match things up in the understanding, or the, at least the speculation that we have about the timeline and the dates being different. What I found looking through is even in the ancient records, many of them were compiled, guess what, guess when? Right around 1850. Ancient records that lasted thousands of years or well over a thousand years that would chronicle some events from that time in the presentation I saw, they wanted to make it seem like it was a major volcanic eruption, specifically Krakatoa, ah, uh, not Krakatoa, Krakatoa, blow ya like Krakatoa, but that's all too easy. I find it suspicious when, for example, in the Chinese dynastical records of the Chinese dynasties, the ancient ones of which there's hardly any record of their existence, the, the most, one of the largest, most powerful empires of the East that reigned for a thousand years, it's, there's hardly any records of it. But you go back and you look at what they came up with, and they have these neatly written ancient records that they pull out in these old-looking books that are just pristine in the sense of being so readable, and they just show you right there, and it says, oh, there was like this big whoosh and a big boom and bang. It's a boom event and bang event. And then along came the winds and the water and everything. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, just like the Tonga thing was presented, just the same thing. But it was all written and compiled, com quote, compiled in, in around 1850. I think it was 1851 or 1852. Unfortunately, very little writing survives from the area, but once again he found a fascinating clue. Housed in the royal palace at Solo in central Java is a massive set of manuscript volumes called the Book of Kings, put together in the 1850s but based on ancient sources. It describes an extraordinary event which took place around the middle of the first millennium AD. Today's Javanese royal archivist, Prince Puja, reads from the original text. A mighty thunder, which was answered by a furious shaking of the earth. Pitch darkness, thunder and lightning, and then came forth a furious gale, together with a hard rain. A deadly storm darkening the entire world. In no time there came a great flood. When the water subsided, it could be seen that the island of Java had been split in two, thus creating the island of Sumatra. Just like everything else, it just comes from that. 
the original sources, the original ancient records, nowhere to be found, really. If you go back in time, in, in 19th century and 17th century, 18th century, there's a lot of volcanoes. They come in lumps, say 20, 30 years, a lot of them. They even overlap in the stratosphere, mixing up. And uh, it's not speculation, but people do think that Turner's paintings with his uh, sunsets, it was not the, the taste of the artist to make them so red as they were, but they were actually painted in a time when the real sunset looked like that. It makes me wonder, and, and so I'm looking around. I mean, this is a real piece of evidence. This is really something special. This is hard evidence. You can count back, assuming that the times and the seasons, the years didn't change. I think it's a relatively safe assumption. You go back and you see this. And it made me start to look at these legends and these myths, which are also in the Bible and the scriptures in the Old Testament, but the, the dates don't match up exactly. They're not that far off, but there are times where the sun was hidden. And one example would be at the crucifixion. They say it was an eclipse, but um, they said that it, they made it seem like it was a total, to, like totality that lasted three hours in that eclipse, but three hours still. We're looking at we're looking for something more like three years, and there are some records that they found which I think are more authentic that talk of the sun going away. They didn't. I mean, they would know if there was a cloud or ash. I mean, they're not stupid. The, the ash would rain down. Some of it would. They would know what it is. They would know that there was earth in the sky, shielding, blocking the sun. It's like. The chemtrail from hell, you know, it lasted for four years. They couldn't grow crops, famine, and all that stuff. And, and a, lot of, a lot of things do record that around that time. The veracity of the sources are somewhat questionable, especially when they call it out specifically, okay, that would make sense, but those ones are all too neat. The ones that interested me were the ones that were not so neat and tidy. They were more of these... Uh, loose, uh, they were already disparaged as being mythical or uh, just folk tales or just oral traditions, or entertainment, you know, whatever. And in those, they said that the sun actually went dark. I mean, these people are not stupid. The sun goes behind a cloud. They, they're not going to say it goes dark. It's, it's there. It's just behind a cloud. I mean, they climb mountains and things. They know... But what they were saying was that the sun actually went dark. And that is found in the Bible and other sacred scriptures, you know, that, uh, I mean, different books of the Old Testament and all that stuff. So, okay. So I think we're getting somewhere with that. And if you would want to take a look and consider it, if I were to say, let's take, for instance, that they added a thousand years that there's a thousand years that just it didn't happen, you know. Then it wouldn't have been uh, 536 AD. It would have been 484 BC. Not BCE, but BC. 484 BC. Don't need the E. Take that E. Just put it away. And that would mean... 44, it, it's interesting. It's almost like I pick that year out and I look 44, uh, 43, 42, 41. You see, there a whole lot of nothing really happened <laughs> at that time. So I think there is something close. I think we're getting close. And so maybe in the comments, some of you can suggest some historical events that happened eh, right around for uh, officially 484 BC or roundabouts and uh, we'll take a look and see does it especially if it has to do with the sun and the darkening of the sun or the hiding of the sun the, some of the things that I saw these uh, 
more reliable ones that I'm referring to were seemingly vague in the way that they describe it, but it's only because we have a foregone conclusion if we're like these other researchers that say, well, the, the sun can't be darkened. Blah, blah, blah. Well, what do you call sunspots? But anyway, uh, it could just be that the sun has this cycle that it does. And, and so it has been, um, what was the number? 1,400 and, what was it, 80... Let me get my calculator out here because I said it. 1,486 years ago. And um, 1,485, 1,484 years ago. And then possibly 1,483 years ago. That's Those are hard numbers according to the tree rings. So it would be what we would think of as 536 AD. And, and interestingly enough, that's about when this missing thousand years of history, I call it missing history, begins. So if if the timeline were correct, that the year was 536 AD, when that happened, then the Middle Ages start around then, you know, and, and that's when everything takes a dump and restarts and really slowly and really crudely all the way up through the end of the Middle Ages, then you have the the Renaissance, and then the Industrial Age, and you get to 1850 pretty quickly, and then it's pretty much almost like today, just rapidly, except technology's just going bananas with on steroids. Technology is like a angelic, demonic, racing, advancing thing, except not for... YouTube creators such as myself that rely on it to become better, faster, smarter. We struggle with it, but for the system, yeah, it's pretty pretty advanced. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And maybe it's not a clean thousand years. Maybe that's just too easy to... Maybe just the changing the I's and the J's to a one as much as that was done, was to cover some things up. But maybe it's not that clean and simple and easy that it was shifted. And maybe different eras and different times are shifted. You go to one century and it may be like a kind of a, a curve function, you know, that goes all over the place. Because if you're creating a fabricated past, then it wouldn't be so simple to have that simple, like, like easy, like the kind of code that would be on a decoder ring from a cereal box. You know, it's probably a little bit more complicated than that. So uh, maybe you can, you can suggest something. Uh, is there a Native American legend or something like that? Put it in the comments and I'll check it out. I'm Douglas, a.k.a. UAP, and I'll talk to you later.